Welcome to NodeBalance.com. Um, today we are going to show you how you create a Gary Smart server on a uh, on a new cloud server that you have uh, deployed with us. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and get the putty.exe from the uh, download link down in the description. This will allow you to remotely connect to your uh, your new Linux server. Is it a host name here? or uh, you enter in the IP address that you get on email and you click open and this is here is going to pop up and it's going to ask you um, to accept the new um, certificate and you're just going to say yes and what that happens now is that a little black window is going to appear on your screen and enter root and then use the password that was sent on email. Um, you should immediately change your root password. You can do this by typing in pass WD and then type in whatever new password you want. It's never a good idea to keep the password that was sent in an uh, unencrypted email. Okay, so to install a Gary Smart server, we first need to install a few libraries. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that the server is updated. So to do this, type in apt get update. This is going to run through and make sure that we have all the latest mirrors and lists. Um, and then you type in apt get upgrade. That's going to upgrade all our, uh, our packages on our server here. And this may take a while. Um, and as you can see here, this is quite an outdated build. Uh, Debian 8 is brand new, so it's still being updated. Um, I'll be get back to you once it's done. All right, so now that the server is updated, we can go ahead and clear that window. Um, now it's time to install some stuff before we can begin here. And the first thing we want to install is some 32 um, libraries here. So we can run the 32-bit uh, program. And that's pretty fast. Um, and now we want to create a separate user. And the separate user is to secure your uh, your server more. Um, because if someone, something were to happen you know, with the game server you're setting up, they wouldn't have access to the full system and only have access to that user. So what we want to type in is add user. And then you can name it anything you want. Um, I'm just going to name mine Steam. Enter in a password. You can skip all this if you want. And yes, that is correct. All right, so now we can go ahead and enter that user by typing uh, SU and then Steam. Fill out Steam with the, the user you created. Um, and then we want to go and type in CD and then make that little squiggly line. That's going to take us to our home directory. And it's in here that we want to uh, create the game server and, and add Steam CMD. So the first thing we should do is create a new folder, MK, here, and then call this Steam CMD and then enter this directory. So now we have an empty directory and into here, uh, we are going to install the program and there's a link down below as well. What we're going to go ahead and do is download the tar, the GZ of the uh, of the program. And we do that by typing wget and then enter in the, uh, the download link there. So if we clear this window, you type in ls list directory and you can um, you can see there. So to untar this, we use this command here, and then you can you can press tap, so you don't have to type in the full name of the uh, of the file there. And that's gonna basically untar it for us. Um, and we can go ahead and remove the Linux um, file there. So now the only thing we have to do really is type in dot and slash, and then steam cmd.sh. And that's going to load up um, all our stuff. All right. So the first thing you should always do when you um, when you get Steam CMD open is log in. And with some games, 
require you to own the game before you can use this tool. Others like uh, CSGO and CarrySmart does not, so we can just log in anonymous. All right, so um, now we're logged in anonymously. Um, now we have to set the directory in which we want to install our game server. So force install gear and then type in the directory. I use um, double dots because that tells it to install in the directory behind this directory, which is directly into my home folder. I'm going to call this gmod1. And then you can uh, find a full list um, of games on the, on the Val website, but for uh, Gary's Mod, this is 4020. So we want to type in uh, app update 40, 40, 40, 20, and then validate. That's just going to download it all for us here. And it shouldn't take too long. Gary's Mod is not really that big, but I will be right back. All right, so now that Gary's Mod has completed the download, um, a lot of people want to also have Counter-Strike source content on their server. Uh, DarkRP uh, requires this to be installed. So how about we do that now? Uh, to install this, you want to use a separate directory. Uh, I'm going to use force, um, force install gear, and then give it a separate directory called C-Strike. And the ID is 232330. And that's just going to update uh, and create the Counter-Strike source files that our newly created Gary's Mod file, uh, sorry, Gary's Mod server will also use. All right, so now that our C strike is also installed, you can go and type exit. That will exit out. And we can go back by tapping in cd dot dot. And as you can see, we now have a C strike folder and a gmod1 folder. Now we want to enter in the C strike folder and then enter in C strike because we're going to need the um, this directory for later when we actually mount uh, C strike. So I'm just going to type in pwd so we can remember this directory. Now we want to go back a little bit. Um, and then enter in the gmod um, folder. All right, so we have all these um, files in here, and the one you want to use is srcds underscore run, and that's going to run the server for you. But if you start it up, like if you just enter in the command to run the game server directly into this command line window, you're not going to be able to close this window and then going back onto your server and then find the window again, because you know, that's kind of how Linux works. So what we're going to do is run the server in a screen. So if we type in screen, um, you'll probably, uh, probably also get this uh, command not found. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this directory up here and put this somewhere else. I'm going to type in exit. All right. So, to install screen um, and also allow us to run this game server, we're going to have to install some libraries um, and screen, of course. So I have compiled a list of good to have uh, items uh, below. It's in the description. You just want to enter that in and you can remove stuff you don't need. Um, FTP, as an example, you don't need that because there's a built in FTP. Um, so we can remove that. But, you know, some people like to use FTP. It's fine. You don't need it, but it's fine if you want to use it. The important part here is the screen, and we're going to execute that. Now, I have already run this, so as you can see, it's not going to install anything. But if you haven't uh, or were missing some of these, it would install it for you. All right, so uh, after the install has completed, you can type in screen. And then you want to type in su steam. And now we are going to go to our home directory by using the uh, CD and then that little squiggly line there. And we want to type in CDGmod1 to enter in our install directory for the game server. 
view all the files there. So now to run it, you want to type in the, uh, you want to use the srcds underscore run. And you want to type in hyphen console, type in hyphen game, Gary's mod, and then plus, plus max players, 16, and plus map gm flat grass. Um, so now we should be able to type enter. And as you can see here, doing it this way, it's going to keep the server online for us. And now we can see that the server should be online. So if we open up our Steam browser and open up our Steam server browser here, we can add a server. Let me copy this. And then we paste that in. And you can see here, we now have a Charismat server running on our VM. Now, to detach from a screen that you've created, you want to hold down control and then type AD. So you can see here, we are now detached. We are now detached from this specific screen. And if you want to return back into it, you want to type in screen hyphen R. And now we're back and can use this console as we normally would. Um, but as you saw us do, um, we installed um, C strike so that we could um, mount that to our server. So to do this, you want to go into the Garry's mod, go into the CFG folder, and then nano mount the CFG. It's going to allow us to edit this file. So we want to uncomment by removing this little slashes there. And then into this path, we want to type in the path of our C strike installation. Uh, and that's slash home slash steam slash C strike slash C strike. And then no um, slash at the end there. Um, there are two C strikes here because C strike is the install folder and C strike is the folder that contains the actual like C strike files basically. We can exit out of that and then we can go up and we can go back a few steps. Back again. All right, here we go. So now we can go up and you find a SRCDS run file. And as you should be able to see is right here. You see that it, it mounted C strike. So now C strike is mounted and the server is ready to be used. Thank you for watching.